Casa Grande, Arizona, population of 58,000. There lives what many believe to be the next great Mexican star in boxing. The fighter most affectionately known as El Mono, Jesus Ramos Jr., will take one step closer to achieving that distinction. Saturday, September 30th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada, the 22-year-old phenom will take on his toughest test to date, former super welterweight title challenger, Erickson Lubin. Featured in the co-main event of Canelo vs. Charlo on Showtime pay-per-view, all eyes will be on the hard-punching southpaw. It's uh, Castle Grand Mountain, and it's uh, 650. We're about to go for a run. It's about it's a, it's a mile up, but then we got sprints up top and all that. It's 8.02 now, um, we started at 6.50, so a little over an hour. It was tough, man, you know, we ran up and then did about 10 sprints up there. And uh, yeah, man, but this is what it's all about. We're gonna go rest right now, eat some breakfast, and then uh, we're gonna come back to the gym and do uh, and some sparring. Today we have sparring. It's um, that's that's the routine that we have. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday we spar. And uh, yeah, man, we're just getting ready. Today we're planning on on ten rounds, and uh, we're just building up throughout camp. So we started at six. We started at four, six, eight. You know, just building up little by little, and then we're gonna peak eventually. September 30th, if, I, if I'm over here, we got we got team rounds. Um, we're working on it, we're working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm giving him my all. Uh, he, he's gonna be ready, September 30th. It was my first time sparring with him. Um, I know the other spar uh, sparring partners worked with him before, but it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, I love sparring when it comes to like the, the chess game. You know what I'm saying? So he makes you think. Um, he's constantly switching it up. So it was definitely, definitely fun to work with him. <laughs> It's gonna be a fire fight, you know, like they've said, it's gonna be a really entertaining fight. Um, it could possibly steal the show, you know, two uh, hungry fighters going at it. Um, but I don't know, I don't think, I think, I don't think Lupin's gonna be able to take Mono's power, you know. Like, I'll be surprised if he makes it uh, past, past six. Yeah, so, so Mono was little, man. Um, he was, he was a small kid, you know, just, he would hang around the gym, you know, in the well, in the garage we used to train there. So we used to, we used to just, you know, he used to come out, hit, do a little shadow box, hit the backs a little bit, and then just go over, go back in, you know, in the house. He wasn't really interested at first, man. But um, I think by the age of nine or eight, that's when he started like really, like showing up to the gym every single day, man. And um, you know, you, you could tell he had talent. I mean, he had talent since he was little. But um, yeah, man, I think that's that's when he started um. 
um, working on his skills and, and competing as well. So right now, uh, we're kind of in the peak of fight of uh, fight training camp, you know. So we're um, we're doing four mini rounds and uh, working hard, man. You know, the morning workouts are intense, the morning runs are intense, the afternoon uh, runs are intense. So everything's intense right now. But as we get closer, we start building up, we start recovering, and uh, we start feeling strong, man. And uh, yeah, that's that's the way we've been doing, it, and that's the way that that's been working for us. It's uh, 8.23 morning, we're heading to our strength and conditioning workout and um, it should take us about an hour and a half, an hour, an hour and a half. After that, we got boxing in the afternoon at 2.30, same as always, but yeah, right now we just got, we're heading to strength and conditioning. A world title for me, it would be, I want to say the ultimate goal, um, because I, I have um, more goals that I've been setting. But it, it would be um, the goal of a eight, nine-year-old Jesus Ramos. You know, the, I always wanted to be a world champion as a little kid. Obviously, I thought that was at the, at the time. I thought that was the biggest thing I could do. Um, so I would fulfill my childhood dream. Uh, but right now, you know, and right now that that is my dream, uh, my short-term dream. You know, that I wanna wanna accomplish becoming a world champion. But um, you know we're we're trying to leave a legacy. You know we want to become undisputed at 154, 160, 168, win multiple divisions, and uh, like I said, leave a good legacy. Uh, when people talk about boxing, they can uh, talk about Jesus Ramos, kind of like we do with Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo as well. So that's what I want. You know I want to leave a, a legacy. Me and my other older brother, we were boxing, and then uh, we wanted to make a comeback. You know, we wanted to turn pro because we never turned pro, so we that's what we wanted. So we started, but we already had kids. We already uh, we, we had a family already. So we had a job and everything, so we started training again, but it was hard, you know. We got tired of work and all that. So that's when I, I told my brother, you know what, why, why don't we train Abel? Because they were running with us, doing everything with us. And they were like 13 years old, 14. And I told him, let's, let's train them. And, and that's how it all started. We, trained, we were training Abel, Benito, and Jose. There were three, three little brothers, so, but Abel was the only one that stayed. When he, he was like about, what, 15 years old? And uh, he was good on the meets, man. He was good, he used to help me with the little kids. And, uh, and at that time, Abel was fighting pro. And uh, it was hard, you know, for Abel, the cuts and all that. It, he, his career was harder, you know, tough. A lot of wars. A lot, yeah, and then he broke his hand and all that. I told, I told him, I told Bono, you know what? Why don't you help me in the, in the gym? You know, you're good on the mids. I tried to convince him to, to do that. You help me on the, on the, on the mids with the little kids and you, you can be a trainer. And since that moment, he said, no, dad, I wanna be, I wanna be a world champion. And I told him, you know, you know how how uh, Abel's career is, it's hard. Just focus on, on training and then going to school, you know. Uh, do something else. I didn't want him to box. And then he say, no, 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 I, I want to be a world champion. It's going to be different. And then, uh, and then after that, he never helped me. He never helped me on the mids no more. <laughs> he just started training. Uh, one. We 
got done uh, strength and conditioning. It's uh, 10 14. So we ended up doing a little over uh, a little over an hour, about an hour and a half. And um, yeah, we're about to get some breakfast, recover, and replenish the body. What's up, man? How you doing? We got the chickens. We got um, I got seven, seven chickens. I've had them. It's about they're about 15, 14, 15 weeks. So about five, five more weeks, and they start laying eggs. I got those two over there. My uncle gave it to me. They're a little older, about two or three years old. Those are already laying eggs. Um, but they, they like to stay to themselves. These ones right here, they're, they're all together. They grew up together, so they're always, they're always together. Um, eating my grass, eating bugs. Yeah, man, they're, they're chill. Uh, my nutritionist gets here today, so she'll be feeding me from now on, but from now, for, for now, this is how we try to keep it light. So Ricardo Finito Lopez has been my favorite fighter uh, growing up all time, you know. Um, there's a lot of Mexican f uh, fighters who have been, who have had a great legacy. But for me, you know, um, I think Ricardo is one of the greats. I love his style, um, everything, he's so technical. So I admire him a lot, man. Um, especially because he's such a humble person. You know, even now that he's, he's a legend, basically. He's, he gives speeches, motivational speeches, and he's humble. I love the way he talks. He knows how to talk. Um, you know, that's kind of how I want to end up. You know, I want to I wanna show that not just thugs mm -hmm. and and uh, and people, you know, like that become a fighter. You know, you can be, you can become a fighter and, and still be educated. I like to read books, like I mentioned. And um, yeah, so I want to follow his footsteps. So, I have a, a glove signed by him, um, and he, he took a picture when he signed the glove right here. Um, and th this was a, a gift from my girlfriend, Damar, uh, when she, when it was, my, it was my birthday actually earlier this year, and I was in training camp. And uh, she tried to make it, um, I, was in, I was in training camp for the uh, Joey Spencer fight, and uh, she tried to make it something, you know, that, that meant something. And it did, man, you know, um, especially after she told me the story, man, she went through she went through a lot. You know, she messaged um, his his agent, he, she, and then he, she messaged him through Instagram too. And it was a long shot, but he reached he reached back, you know. And uh, you know, he lives all the way in Mexico City. So the way she did it, man, she was sending Ubers to the store, to his house, you know, to to the Reyes store buy glove back to the house to his house so you know shout out to all the ubers in mexico who 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 did who made it possible too mm -hmm. you know they they went down got bought a bought a glove took it to finito's house brought it back you know it was crazy man but she made it happen so yeah it was it's an it's a it's a beautiful gift man like you don't like that high pace fighting and that body shot you see that body shot snug it right in the middle Body shot. Here, look. He hasn't thrown a punch since he got hit with that body shot. Right through the middle. That, those are the punches we've been practicing. And he was already started throwing back. I'm gonna do a 20 seconds without throwing after that small body shot. And I think Fundora, if he would have focused a little more on the body, he would have made it. He started head. He started head hunting for that uppercut a lot, yeah. right? He's got done warming up. Um, we're, we're at the boxing session now. Uh, we got done with the warm up, 10 minute jump, 10 minute jump rope, 20 minute um, shadow boxing. Everybody start mitts, about 10, 10 round the mitts. Um, bag work, you know, just different things. Um, working on the game plan, but another hard day at work. Been 
very focused that's one thing and boxing was literally his life like he spent a lot of time here at the gym and we were close but this was his home literally the gym was always um, where he was it was his home everything whatever he used to do it was just like oh it's so cute you know like but we call oh look el mono like he's monito you know like not like a toy but it's like a cute basically that's what it means for us i'm always gonna get nervous whenever he is on the stage i'm always gonna be like you know like nervous even if i know he's gonna do his best and i know and i trust him and i know he's ready for that fight i'm always gonna be nervous i'm the mom and I, you know i don't want nobody to touch my son so <laughs> He ended up breaking my ribs one time. Uh, <laughs> For no the lie. camera. No the lie. Camera. But did you feel it right then and there? Or it was like days after? It was days after. It slowly crept off on me. But I'm not going to lie. Bro, I better not have no broken ribs, dog. See, that, that's how I felt. The next day, it was like, okay, when I woke up, I was struggling to breathe. I was like, oh man, like what's going on? I remember I even went to your guys' house and I was all like, yeah. Uh, I think it's just deep bruising, you know, like real deep bruising. And then when I went to the doctor, I'm like, you know, you got three cracked ribs. I'm all like, Are you serious? I'm like, yeah. I called him, huh? And I was all like, hey, you broke my ribs, bro. Yeah. 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 We just dedicate them. We just, we've been talking about being a champion for a long time. And it's finally getting there, so. Me and my dad, we, we sat down and we were talking about it for like a week about being on the Canelo, Canelo and Charlo card and against uh, Lubin. We were, we were just talking about it, just thinking, you know, what if? And uh, yeah, we got the call and um, we just felt like we attracted it, man. It was, it was the, the, the law of attraction, the full effect. We gotta keep uh, looking good, man, for this to keep happening, you know? We gotta keep uh, working hard. You know, this, this didn't come overnight and this didn't come um, just based off, you know, being, being lazy or not taking things serious. You know, we took everything serious. We've been working hard, improving, and that's how we got here. You know, we can't forget about that um, and just keep Keep embracing everything, man. I mean, it's really cool. Everything that I'm living at such a young age, so I'm. I just gotta embrace everything, enjoy, enjoy while it lasts, enjoy the journey. Bueno, hablar de de Jesús Ramos, mucha gente va a decir, pues, quién es. Este, la verdad es un diamante que lo están puliendo muy bien. Eh, yo lo conocí por medio de un buen amigo. Este, me lo presentó, me empezó a hablar de él, maravillas. Yo también decía, quién es, qué quién es este realmente. Eh, Jesús, entonces ya cuando lo empecé a ver, empecé a ver sus peleas, empecé a ver las actuaciones en Las Vegas, empecé a saber más de él, de Culiacán, avecindado en Phoenix, de familia mexicana, yo creo que eso fue lo que me dio pauta para empezarlo a seguir, lo invité a mi podcast, e hicimos uno, empecé a escuchar su historia, empecé a saber cómo él era boxísticamente y empecé a verlo también avanzar, me tocó ver dos peleas este, después del podcast y él me decía, yo quiero las peleas grandes, yo quiero avanzar y, y hoy hablé con él y le dije... Creo yo 
que lo jalaste rápido. Y ir en el respaldo de Saúl Canelo Álvarez para mí, creo que va a ser una plataforma muy grande para ti, va a ser un trampolín en el que vas a poder brillar y por qué no, te puedes robar la noche.